Welcome to the tutorial on the new MLX 300 T-Screen on the Robot Pendant. This new feature is a huge advancement for the MLX 300 product line. Customers will no longer need to buy an extra pendant to perform teach and play mode operations. In the past, a customer would need to buy a ProFace or an Allen Bradley Mobile View pendant to use the MLX 300. Eliminate the requirement to buy this extra pendant and its interface will save customers $4,000 to $8,000. For a hands-on demonstration, I'll be showing the robot pendant touchscreen and its membrane keypad on the right side. Half of the keys shown would not be used, so I wanted to point out which keys are used with the MLX 300 T-screen. Note that for this demo, I'll be using the remote pendant operation function. The servo on and jogging keys are grayed out because it's not possible to execute a robot motion with this remote display. With the new MLS T-Screen, everything now can be done on the robot pendant for both teach and play mode operations. Since the tools and user frames can now be taught on the robot pendant, this information needs to be transferred to the PLC so that it can activate these items in the play mode. Every time the MLX T-Screen is accessed, the first 10 tools and user frames on the controller will be transferred to the PLC. To launch the MLX 300 T-Screen, press the button in the lower right hand corner. There will be a message showing a reminder that the first 10 tools and user frames are being transferred to the PLC. First, I'd like to talk about all the items on the screen. Starting at the top left, you can select a teach list number, which is the same as a job number on the other MLX HMIs. This is just a group of teach points. Next, you can choose a point number, a tool number, and a coordinate type that this point will be taught in. The choices are base, which is world, or a user frame number. Only the user frame numbers that were taught will be shown. There is an option to turn on up to four outputs. There's a message bar. On the right it shows the current robot position and on the left it shows the selected point data. This point hasn't been taught yet so it shows unrecorded. On the lower right side there are buttons to teach a point and tools used to maintain a clean list of points that are in the same order as a motion sequence. It's very easy to increment and decrement the fields with the up and down buttons on the keypad. They can be used for any of the items across the top. For example, I'll increment and decrement the teach point number. The coordinate button on the keypad can be used to change the jogging coordinates. The status of the jogging coordinates is shown in the top right corner of the screen. When I press this button, it will change from world, to tool, to user frame, to joint, and back to world. The next indicator is the jogging speed. The speed setting can be changed on the keypad with the fast and slow buttons. As mentioned before, the servo on button and the jogging keys are grayed out since motion can't be executed with this remote display. The last indicator shows the status of running or an e-stop condition. The area button can be used to move the cursor to each of these items on the screen in a clockwise fashion. The cancel button can be used to reset an alarm. The interlock button must be pressed at the same time any of the buttons on the right side of the touchscreen are pressed. This will prevent an accidental activation of these buttons. The grayed out forward button is used to jog the robot to a top position. Before we teach a point, let's add a name to the list of points. You can press cancel to erase the current text and then enter the name. We will call it palletizing. Also create a name for the teach point. I'll call it approach. 
Note that these names are not stored in the PLC until a point is taught. To teach a point, press the interlock and teach buttons at the same time. After the point is recorded by the PLC, a message will state that the current robot position is at the selected point, and the data will be the same. I'll increment the point number to teach point 1. This is really the same point because the robot hasn't been moved. Next I'd like to demonstrate the controls to maintain a clean list of points. These buttons will help you keep your order of points the same as the order of the motion sequence. It's easy to insert new points and delete unwanted points. When I press interlock insert point, the data from point 1 at any point number higher will be moved to the next point number. When I increment to the point number 2, you can see the data that was moved from point 1. I'll go back to point 1. If I press interlock delete point, all the points above this will be shifted down by one position. Now you can see the data that was moved from point 2 to point 1, and point 2 is unrecorded. Pressing interlock clear point will erase all the data of the selected point. For this case, no point data was shifted. I'll decrement back to point 0. The last option is the clear list button. This will display a confirmation that you'd like to clear all the points in the selected list. Now the message bar states that the list is empty. When you are programming a material handling sequence, there are many times when you need to activate a gripper or some other device in the cell. The MLS 300 provides an option to turn on and off four outputs. To turn on an output, press interlock on. You can change the output number and turn on a second output. To turn it off, press interlock off. These four outputs can be mapped to turn on any robot controller or PLC output. Now let's close the MLXT screen. When it exits, you will see the forward job. This was automatically called when the MLXT screen was launched. The reason this happens is for jogging to a top point using the forward button on the keypad. The forward job was set up as the master job before the robot shipped. To see what controller outputs are turned on, select the In Out tab and choose General Purpose Output. As a default, the MLXT screen outputs were mapped to the first four controller outputs. You can see that the first output was left on from the MLXT screen. Note that these outputs can't be changed on the screen because the PLC has control over them. If you need to turn on some outputs while you're not in the MLXT screen, the pendant keypad has been set up with hotkeys to activate I.O. For the general purpose and handling applications, some of the number keypad buttons have labels. For example, 2 is tool on and period is tool off. The MLX systems have been set up to use four of these keys to turn on and off two outputs. If more outputs are needed, it's possible to use all 12 of these buttons. Pressing interlock 1 will turn on output 5. And pressing interlock 2 will turn on output number 6. The zero key and the period key will turn off these outputs. Next, I'd like to show you a motion demo with a different setup. Let's press the MLX Teach button to launch the screen again. Now you'll see a robot on the right side and the top of the pendant below it. For this setup, I'll be showing button presses on this touch screen but I'll also be pressing the actual robot pendant buttons at the same time. 
This will allow me to execute robot motion and also shield the remote pendant screen. To get started, I'll teach a point at the robot's current position. To turn servo power on, I'll press the servo on button and squeeze the enabling switch. Then I'll jog the robot away from this point. If I press the forward button on the robot pendant keypad, the robot will move back to the top point and the message will state that the robot is at the top point. Next I'd like to teach a motion routine with six points. The PLC array has an example program in the MMOX task with motion commands using these six points. To teach the next point, I'll jog the robot down, increment the point number to one, and teach this position. I'll increment the point number to two and continue this process to teach four more points. It's quicker to increment the point number using the up button on the pendant keypad. I'm showing the option to press the touch screen up arrow just so you can see what's going on. Now that the six points are taught, let's close the screen and go to the play mode to execute the PLC program. The MLX300 play mode operations can be found under the IF panel on the main screen. For this screen to be operational, the three blue indicators on the left side must be on. The first one indicates that the PLC heartbeat is active. The other two indicate the requirement that the robot pendant key switch must be switched to the remote mode and the MOX key switch must be set to auto. To enable the buttons on the screen, you first need to press interlock and the operation button at the top right until it's set to perm or permit. This prevents accidental pressing of these buttons. Now you can press the servo on button and the servos indicator will turn on. To begin the program's execution, press the green start button at the top of the robot pendant. If you press the white hold button on top of the pendant, the robot will pause. The green held indicator will turn on, and you can also see the yellow indicator shows that the motion buffer still has queued motion commands. When you press the start button again, the robot will continue the path where it left off. Let's press the hold button again. This time we don't want to continue the path in the program. We'd rather start the program at the beginning. To do this, you would press the abort and the reset buttons to clear the motion that is queued up in the buffer. This time when you turn servo power back on and press the start button, the program will start at the beginning. That concludes the live demo of the new MLX Teach screen. Keep in mind that with this new solution, the tools, user frames, and interference zones can all be set up with the standard robot pendant screens. There are a few items that are not compatible with the MLX T-Screen yet. If your controller has Ethernet safe, the MLX T-Screens cannot be used. It also can't be used with controllers that have multiple robots or a servo track. However, you can have multiple controllers, and each one can have one robot. I thank you for watching the operations of this new MLX 300 feature. I hope that you will benefit from the reduced system costs and become more competitive with the advantage of a complete PLC control of the robot solution.